Hello guys and welcome to episode 3 in my Evernote in Godot series. Today we're going to have a look at the audio stream player node. I have prepared some assets beforehand. So we got some music here. Uh, I play some piano, so this is a track I made. And we also have a nice sound effect here. Hello my dear friend. And the music sounds like this. Alright. And inside of the scenes folder, I have prepared the audio player folder and we've got a menu background that we're going to use as well. All right. Go to scene, new scene, make this a bit smaller. Click on 2D scene. Rename the node here to audio player. Then right click the audio player node, click on add shell node and find the audio stream player right down there. Click on create. We're going to use two of them. So repeat the process. We're going to name the first one to be the music player. And the second one is going to be the sound effect. So we're going to start by loading in the music here. So click on the music player and drag the track here into the stream. You can use whatever track you want. I'm using this one because that's the guy I have. And I'm going to click on the sound effect. I'm going to drag in the hello, my dear friend sound effect into this guy. Next, we're going to right click up here. We're going to click on add shell node. We're going to add a canvas layer. I'm going to click on create. And right click the canvas layer. Click on add shell node. And find the margin container in here. And click on create. I'm going to click here on layout. And we're going to set this guy to be center wide. Like so. And then we're going to change some things here on the margin. I'm going to say left is going to be 400. Right is going to be minus 400. We're going to have a top of minus 120 and a bottom of 64. So we're going to place some buttons in the middle of the screen here, basically. Then right click the margin container, click on that shell node and find the VBox container and click on create. Then go over here to size flags and just click on expand on these two guys. Next, we're going to right click the VBox container and click on that shell node and we're going to add a button in here. I click on create. Right now, this guy is a bit too thin. So we're going to go down here to rect. We're going to set the min size on the y axis to be 40. Like so. I'm going to rename this guy to be the play button. And we're going to duplicate this guy two times. So press Ctrl D twice. And we're going to rename the second one to be the pause button here. And the final guy is going to be the exit button. So you can click on the play button, go to the top and type in play and click on the pause button and call this guy pause and the exit button should be exit. Next, we're going to right click the VBox container, click on add shell node and we're going to find the label in here. We're going to set the text to be song position here. Let's can zoom this guy in a bit. I'm going to right click the VBox container, click on add shine node. I'm going to find the horizontal slider and click on create. And we can rename this guy to be the music position. Like so. And we can rearrange this guy a bit. We can put this guy under the pause button. And we're going to add a final button. So press Ctrl D on the exit button. And rename this guy to play sound effect. Let's type in play sound effect on the button as well. And we can move this guy up above the exit button. All right, so we now have ourselves a little bit of a menu. Then we can right click the auto play node up here, click on that shell node, and let's find a color rect and click on create. And we're going to set the color here to be 3D. 576F. I can press escape to close this guy. And this color rect is going to have the size of 1024 by 600, which is the current size of the window. So if you go on product, product settings, scroll down here to window, you can see it's 1024 by 600. 
And I'm also going to change mood here to be 2D for the stretch. And aspect radio, I'm going to click on keep there. And click on close. Now, click on scene and save scene. And we can go into the audio player folder here. I'm going to save this as audio player.tsem. So click on save. Like so. Next, we're going to right click the audio player. Click on add child node. I'm going to find the sprite and click on create. We can rename this guy to be the menu background, so menu PG. And I'm going to go here to audio player GFX. I'm going to drag in the menu BG on this guy as a texture. Then click on offset and remove the offset. We're going to go down here and change the scale. I'm going to enable the grid so we can fix this to be in the right position, like so. All right. Gonna save the node so we have now built our gui right here next we're gonna right click the audio player and we're gonna click on attach script make sure this is a c sharp script it's gonna be called audio player.cs inside of the audio player folder here so click on create in here we're gonna add the following variables Here we have the variables for all of the different UI elements we have to modify in some kind of way. So if we just drag this to the side. So as you can see here, we have the play button, the pause button, we have the exit button. We have the audio stream for the music player, the sound effect. We have the music slider, which is called music position here. So these are the guys we need. So inside of the render method, we're going to grab all of the nodes here from the scene and we're going to disable the pause button and we're going to disable the music slider by default so we can go back to the Godot editor now we now have to set up a couple of signals we're going to start with the play button so click a node up here double click the toggle signal here and we're going to attach this to the script on the other player node so let's rename this guy to be a bit more c sharp standard Then select all the text, right click and copy, and click on connect. This is going to bring up Visual Studio Code for us. So in here we're going to paste this guy in. I'm going to say private void. Now this guy, if you have a look at the signal here, we can see it's going to take in a bool here with the button pressed. So let's call this bool pressed. And the first code we're going to have in here is the following. We're going to check if the play button is pressed. If so, then we're going to switch the text to stop instead of play on the button and we're going to start playing the music then we're going to make sure that the pause button is no longer disabled so that we can pause the music then we're going to make sure that the music slider is editable so that we can move it around now we're going to add two help functions here one to reset the music slider and one to reset the pause button so in here for the reset music slider we're saying that editable is false. So we're going to disable that guy. And we're going to reset the music slider value to be zero. To reset the pause button, we're going to make sure that it is disabled. And we're going to reset the stream paused to be false. Then we're going to set the pause button press state to be false as well. And we're going to reset the text on the button to be pause. All right. So here, if the play button was unpressed, then we're going to change the text to be play again and we're going to stop the music from playing and we're going to call this helper functions down here reset the music slider and to reset the pause button all right so this is for the play button let's go back to the Godot editor and also for these guys to work you have to make sure that this guy has to have the toggle mode enabled and it's going to be the same thing for the pause button we're going to set toggle mode enabled in this guy and we're going to add a signal to this guy soon. So let's save the auto player. Go to the main scene. Right click the main scene. Click on instant shell scene. And let's add the auto player here. And click on open. And let's click on play. And we're going to click on select current for the main scene. And let's click on play. Yep, that works. And we can click on stop as well. So let's close this guy down. Next, we're going to make sure that we can pause the music. So go to node here, 
and double click the toggle signal and attach it to the audio player and as usual some c-sharp standard on naming here select all the text right click copy and click on connect so underneath here we're going to add our on pause toggled and in here we're going to do the following and we also need the bool pressed here so in here if the pause button is pressed then we're going to change the text on the button to be unpause then we're going to set the music stream to be paused here and we're going to make sure that the music slider is uneditable then if the pause button was unpressed we're going to change the text back on the button to be pause and we're going to unpause the music stream and we're going to make the music slider editable again all right let's save Control s back to the editor here and click on play so if we click play now we can now pause the music and if we click on stop and this says on pause we're going to have the default value again all right next when we press the play sound effect button we're going to play the nice sound effect here hello my dear friend so let's go back down here to the play sound effect and click on no and click on pressed and attach this to the other player and on play sound effect pressed so let's copy this guy right click copy and click on connect private void paste this guy in and whenever we are pressing the button we're going to play the sound effect let's go back to the go.editor and click on play hello my dear friend so we can play the music hello my dear friend hello my dear friend and play the sound effects all right next let's make sure we can exit the program and we are here in the nodes so let's connect the press signal to the audio player script here let's right click and copy private void paste this guy in and we're gonna go get tree dot quit and this will close down everything here all right so let's go back and click on play so if you now click on exit we're going to close the application now let's do the last and most fun part we have the slider here so when we click on play this slider is going to move by itself and show the current position of the music and if we click somewhere on the slider we want to change the music position to be on that position all right so make sure you have selected the music position here and go to node we're going to use the gui input signal here so double click on this guy attach it to the audio player script rename this to c sharp standard right click copy and click on it and down here we also have to get the event in here if we go back and have a look at the signal up here we can see we have event input event and the code we're going to use in here is going to be the following we check if the event is the type input event mouse button then we define a variable for that mouse event and we check if the mouse button is pressed so that means we have just clicked then we check which button that was clicked and if it was the left mouse button we're going to flag that the music slider should be updated because of the click and then we're going to set the music slider position to the value of the music slider here. So we have a variable here called the definition. And this guy is the guy we are setting right now. All right. And the final thing we have to do now is add another method here called update music slider position. And what this guy is going to do is to check if the music is playing. Then we're going to get the length of the music. And we're going to convert the current position in the audio stream to a value between 1 and 100. And this is because the slider values are between values 0 and 100. So this should be 0 and 100. Then we're going to update the slider value so we know where in the song we are. All right. So inside of this process method, we're going to update the music slider position whenever the music is playing. So if you now press Ctrl S, go back to the editor and click on play. now we can now click on play 
and we will see the slider move here. All right, so now let's make sure we can click here and move the slider along as well. Now we need to go here to the music position again. And we're gonna go here to node. And we're gonna double click on the value change signal here. And let's rename this guy to on music position. It's a bit more C sharp standard. So we can copy this guy again, click on connect. Right above the update music slider position, I'm gonna paste the following code here. So whenever the music slider position value has changed, I'm gonna check if the user clicked on the slider to move it. On the GUI here. So if the user has clicked on the slider, it is only then that we will run all the code in here. So if the user clicked on the slider, then we're gonna set the music slider position value we have to be the value of the slider. Then we're gonna get the length of the music string. Then we're gonna make sure that the slider position is within range. Then we're gonna convert the slider position to the position in the audio stream. So we do that by taking the music length and we're gonna multiply that with the music slider position, which goes between zero and 100. So we convert that down by multiplying with 0 0.01 to get the inter percentage. And we're gonna to seek to that position in the stream. And finally, we're gonna reset the update music slider position from click to be false here. So let's, let's save, minimize and click on play. And let's start the music. And let's try to move somewhere in the song. Hello, my dear friend. Now we can play sound effects at the same time. All right. Now we can pause and unpause the music. All right, guys. This was a more in-depth tutorial of how you can use the audio stream player. As usual, you can download the code from my GitHub page. The link is in the description. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and see you in the next video. Bye for now.